In this video, we're going to take a look at polynomial functions. Now, specifically, we're going to look more just generally the shape of the graph and how many x-intercepts and y-intercepts it could have and whether it has a max or a min. So let's start with just looking at what a polynomial is. So you'll see that this long, long equation um, describes a polynomial. Um, it's a little bit intimidating, but we'll break it down. So n, which you can see is actually a down here is a subscript and also a superscript. So the n in the top, those are the exponents. And these n values always have to be whole numbers. So the exponents have to be whole. or has to be a whole number in order for it to be a polynomial. x is a variable. And the numbers a0, a1, a2, and so on up to an, going in reverse order. Um, these are real numbers and these are called coefficients. So they have to be real numbers, they can't be imaginary numbers, which we'll talk about later on. So the n just happens to be the same as the exponent, but it's just identifying that this is a different coefficient than the second coefficient, which is different, or could be the same as a third, and so on. Uh, the degree of a polynomial is the greatest exponent of x in the whole equation if the leading coefficient um, where a sub n does not equal zero then the degree of the polynomial is n so it will be the same as what the largest exponent is the term whose value is not affected by the variable is called the constant term and it's not affected by the variable because it doesn't have a variable so in this case that would be that last number here it doesn't have a variable so it is constant and the domain of any polynomial function is always all real numbers so let's take a look at um, how graphs look like so we're going to break it down into two um, types of polynomials those with an odd degree and those with an even degree so if it has an odd degree, it has the following characteristics. So the y-intercept, it will always correspond to the constant term of the function. Now right now it might be a little bit confusing or because there's no graph to look at, but I'll put a picture of a graph after and you can take a look. Um, there's always at least one x-intercept and up to a maximum of n x-intercepts. The domain is all real numbers, and the range is also all real numbers. Um, there's no maximum or minimum points because the graph goes on and on in other direction. So let's take a look at what an example would look like. So if n is odd, and when I refer to n, I'm talking about the highest exponent. Okay, so something like right there. So if n is odd, so if the and the coefficient is positive, then the left end points down and the right end points up. So a couple of examples that you really know is just the simple y equals x. Notice that my coef my exponent is odd and the a value here is positive. So that's just a a line that goes like this. Notice the left end points down and the right end points up. Another example would be y equals x cubed. And that looks something like this. And again, you can see the left end points down and the right end points up. If n is odd, so same thing if n is odd, but now we have the coefficient is less than zero, the a, then the left end points up and then the right end now points down. So some simple examples that you've seen before is let's have negative x. So that's a line that goes down to the right. So you can see the left end pointing up and the right end pointing down. And same with y equals negative x cubed. So if you graph this, you'll find that the graph does something like this. I've exaggerated this a little bit. Let's actually draw a little bit better graph so it actually looks more like this 
So the left end points up and the right end points down again. So let's just go back to what um, I had talked about before. So if you think about it, if I draw in the axis in any of these graphs, I can see that um, the y-intercept, um, there's only one y-intercept, um, there's at least one x-intercept, so you can see there's always at least one, okay? Um, and we can have a maximum of n inter x intercepts, which I'll show you in a little bit. The domain's all real numbers because it goes on and on to the left and right. And the range is also all real numbers, as you can see, it goes on and on down and on and on up. All right, so let's take a look at graphs of even degree. So even. Um, they have the following characteristics. So the y intercept corresponds to the constant term again. Because that's when we set something equal to zero, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, this time there can be zero to a maximum of n x-intercepts. The domain again is still all real numbers, but the range has changed. It's not real numbers anymore. So the range is dependent on the maximum or the minimum value. All right, so let's take a look at some specific cases. So again, we need to break it down. I'm taking a look at what happens if the exponent is even. Um, so, and then whether the coefficient is positive or negative. So if the exponent is even and the coefficient is positive, then both ends of the graph point up. Now, I think it's nice and easy to remember the parabola because that's something that we looked at last year. So always think back to the parabola, y equals x squared. And when you think of the parabola, just the basic one, you'll notice that both ends point up. If n is even, such as y equals x squared, but now you have a coefficient that's less than zero, let's say negative x squared, then you'll notice that both ends of the graph now point down. So just like y equals negative x squared, we have the graph pointing downwards. So if we review our two terms before, if again I draw some an x-axis and a y-axis, you will notice that it says there's one y-intercept. Okay, so this will eventually go down and hit the y-axis. And um, it also says the second point here has from zero to a maximum of n x-intercepts. So if you take a look at these graphs here, you can see that this one has two x-intercepts, which is power of two, but this one actually has none because sometimes it could be low enough that it actually won't hit the x-axis. And so it actually won't have any x-intercepts. Uh, the domain you can see is all real numbers again for both because it goes on and on to the left and right, but it has a minimum if it points up or a maximum if it points down. So we actually need to be able to find out what that minimum or maximum is so we can actually define the domain oh sorry define the range um one last note here um generally the number of bumps meaning if i draw a graph let's say i'm drawing this graph here like this the number of these bumps generally is one less than the degree so if you take a look at the squared ones notice there's only one bump okay so as a little practice, uh, we're going to identify whether each function is a polynomial. And if it is a polynomial, describe the end behavior of the graph of the function, uh, indicate what the degree is, the possible number of x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and whether the graph has a max or min. Now, I recommend that whenever you do any of these questions, it's always great to um, draw just a mini graph, even if it doesn't have to be perfect, just so that you understand or can visualize what the graph looks like. So we have this first one here. Uh, we can see that the highest exponent is three. Um, notice that this first number here, the five, is also positive. So generally, I notice that this graph would go something like this, okay? So it starts from the bottom left and it goes up to the top right. So this is a polynomial because the all of the coefficients are whole numbers or integers, I should say. 
and the exponents are all whole numbers. So yes, this is a polynomial. Now when I'm describing the end behavior, what I'm looking for is, so I'm going to actually draw a grid on here. Now this actually might not be the graph of this equation here, but when I look at this graph on this grid, I can see that it starts off in this quadrant and it goes towards this quadrant. If I number the quadrants, this would be one, this would be two, this would be three, and this would be four. So we see that the end behavior is that the graph goes from quadrant three to quadrant one. Okay. The degree is simply the highest exponent, which is three, and the number of x-intercepts. Now in this case, I've drawn um, the axis like this, but I don't actually really know what the graph looks like without actually plugging in some points. So it can have three, no? so it can have three x-intercepts, but it could also just have one depending. So if I actually lowered this x-axis and made it down here so that it actually didn't even cross, then you can see that there would only be one x-intercept. So we're going to say that there are from one to a maximum of three x-intercepts. We don't know unless we actually plot this graph. Um, the number of y-intercepts we can see from the graph is one. And there is no maximum in because the graph keeps going down and it also keeps going up. So there are none. In the second function here, g of x, because this exponent here is negative, it's not allowed to be negative, um, because, so it's not a polynomial. So this would be no. And let's take a look at the last one. So the last one does have all positive exponents and all the coefficients are integers. So this is a polynomial. Um, now just to have a quick drawing to see what this looks like, um, notice it's a power of four, so it's gonna have three bumps because it's one less than the degree, and the coefficient is negative. So that means that this graph opens down. So instead of just drawing a parabola, because that type is what we normally go back to, is a power of two, we're gonna draw something that looks like this. Okay, so it has three bumps, and if I draw in the axis, just roughly wherever, I can see that the end behavior would go from the third quadrant to the fourth quadrant. So we say that this is from the third quadrant to the fourth quadrant. The degree, the highest exponent is four. And my x-intercepts, now again, I don't really know what this graph looks like. I could have drawn the um, axis in differently. So you can see that I do have right now four x-intercepts. But I could also have drawn my axis, I'm going to erase these. I could also have drawn it like this. And if I drew my axis over here, I can actually see that I wouldn't have had any um, x-intercepts at all. So I can say that there are from zero to four x-intercepts. Um, the y-intercepts, there's going to be one, and there always will be one at least, or actually one. So in this case, there is one y-intercept. Now there is a maximum here, because I can see that when I draw this, there was the highest point. And that's because the graph opens down. So we say that there is a max. But no min, because the graph keeps going down and down and down. And that's it.